but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him but the end of it is the way of death help us tonight in the name of jesus open our eyes to the things of the spirit empower us by light in the name of jesus christ hallelujah um, i began to think and meditate on the things that i'll be sharing and the lord began to reveal to me how that if we stay on course please listen if we stay on course with spiritual things and the things we are hearing the things we are listening to the lord again began to give me an assurance that there is a height he's taking us in the spirit and that that height will not come in one day but that line upon line precept upon precept if we will be faithful enough to allow the light of God finish its work in our lives. You know, one of the things that we suffer a lot in the body of Christ is impatience. Everyone say impatience. We want everything to happen sharp, sharp. We want anointing sharp, sharp. We want insight sharp, sharp. We want to have all the revelations of the kingdom. You want to listen to all the koinonia messages and receive all of the impartations at once you want all of the prosperity and the blessings to just come at once except for the fact that that's not how spiritual things work hallelujah god does not throw people up he lifts people and it's a process when he lifts you he sustains you by knowledge hallelujah praise the lord so it's not just enough to be lifted you will come down but when he raises you up and then he keeps you in a place of stability no power in existence can bring you down hallelujah one of the things that i really thought about um i thought about a lot of things but one of them that struck a chord in my spirit and that will be the foundation of our teaching tonight i'll be very brief and then you know over the last few weeks i've been challenging our convictions praise the lord those of us who have been consistent for a while you know that i have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new, that is sustainable, and is able to take you to the place where God wants you to go. It's not enough that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. It's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. Like the lovely lady there shared, that she knew that there was a place, there was a, a prophetic destiny for her life. But knowing it, brothers and sisters, is not enough. You must know how to get there and what it takes to get there. And then you must commit yourself. And this is one of the major problems with the body of Christ. We teach a lot about where we are going and where God is taking us. And the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us. And that is not a lie except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are to that prophetic destiny they will be frustrated with time the bible says hope that is deferred 
can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals. But to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane. And if you subject yourself to these teachings, listen to me, listen to me. If you subject yourself to the truths you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly, wholly. The Bible says how that Joshua followed the Lord wholly. Was it Caleb? The Lord wholly, not half-hearted. There are many of us who, um, we love the Lord, but we are not really convinced about spiritual things. Hallelujah. So our perception about spiritual things are just on the average. You are not extreme. You are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things. So you can bend when you hear anything else. But the Bible says be steadfast. Be immovable. Hallelujah. You must be rooted in something. Listen. Let me tell you something. If you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality, then don't keep quiet about it. Probe what you've heard. And if you think it is not consistent with the word of God, throw it away. Do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of God for the purpose of solidarity. Not because it is a revelation we plan to apply. Hallelujah. Probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it. Is that true? If you were left all to yourself, you would not agree with some of those things. Why deceive yourself? Kick away anything your spirit does not agree with and you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about. Are you getting my point? There is no point standing for nothing. If you don't believe in prosperity, don't behave and pretend like you believe it. Probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it. If you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, see, it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong. Because in the end of it, you will not get any results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. So, it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of God. The question is, are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe and hold on to? That in the secret place where no one is watching you, you know that this is still my conviction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say this because there are many of us in the past, maybe three, four, five years, your spiritual life has not been stable. It's been a journey like a pendulum. Right now, you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again. I heard a lady send me a text and said, honestly, since I graduated, let me tell you sincerely, I went to a church and I'm serving under that church and I've sat under that teaching for three, two, three months or thereabout. And right now, I don't even know what I should believe again. If that becomes your testimony, you will be angry in the future. Because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place. There are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic, as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are. They sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass. And they run. People give towards those ideologies. People give their lives towards those ideologies. What do you believe? What can you stand for about God? 
about your life, about your destiny. Are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of God's life? We just hop around anything that looks like the truth. So you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing, based on what I've had now, I'm not really sure. It doesn't make sense. Let me stop. And then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying. And then tomorrow it's easy for you to bribe. And then later on you say, Kite, I need to repent. Where do you stand? See, the Bible says, I wish that thou art hot or cold. You are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. He said, as a result, I will spew you out of my mouth. You must stand for something. You must stand for an ideology. You must stand for a dimension of truth. It's like marriage. You cannot marry every woman. Is that true? You cannot marry every man. So you see a pretty lady right now and say, ah, ah, where have you been? If I saw you, I would not ask Rose out. And then the next thing you see another person and say, you see, that's how many of us are. There is a lot of spiritual harlotry. And at the end of it, we are infected with all kinds of viruses. Nothing stands. So you used to pray and fast, but you had something. And right now, you don't even see a need for it again. Then you hear another message and you are now confused. So believers are swinging like pendulums. If your life must move forward, you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you something. I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives. And I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say, our focus now is holiness. And then later on, they say, our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So, we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did. Because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it. You cannot find it. Because what you have held on to is not working. Listen. We are going to pray in one minute. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Pray for one minute. I'm communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today. And we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about. Because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray.
What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it. Proximity is not the same as connectivity. That you are close to an anointing, that you are close to a revelation, does not mean it will become part of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe. We cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the, the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives. That you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married. And that commitment, you are so ashamed of it. Is that true? To an extent that when you hear people talking and they say, how about you? So who is for this weekend? You just laugh. And then you feel to say, no, 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 no. I, I, this is not my ideology. It is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come. Hallelujah. Every great man is fanatic about something. And if you must ever experience greatness, especially in the spirit, you must have something you are convinced about. And you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions. Very interesting scripture. The Bible says, can we have that scripture again? There is a way that what seems right seems right unto a man and appears straight. The road is not straight. <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing, it is a straight road. Hallelujah. Like a drunkard. When a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer, he can see this door right here. Is that true? Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God. About rapture. About the coming of Christ. About Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work, there are those who believe that walking is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not walking, you are not yet a man or a woman. 
you are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours, 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid, and those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much every subject that we had to study we took it very seriously and um, I did fine arts and one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson, we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing. Is that true? And they called it what? Perspectives. And so when we were given assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life. And everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside, we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it, my goodness, you would think Koinonia has been held in a stadium. Perspectives. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success 
an increase are you getting me and a good life and a great life and from his perspective that is all there is to the christian experience are you getting me and then the christians in places like iraq and iran and the israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood it can cost you your life this is their perspective are you getting what i'm saying and to them it may not interest them so much when you are teaching this guy here is teaching i have come that you may have life is that true and have life more abundantly i refuse to be sick i refuse to be poor whereas another person looking at the same truth from another perspective begins to speak and say for me to live is christ and to die is gain if it will cost me my life so be it yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven there is a fight and this is his perspective now the trouble starts hear me when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective you see where error begins to come in when we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body hallelujah and so i'm here this is the perspective i've seen and now i look at the person in iraq and i say this guy does not have faith if he had faith guns and bullets will not enter his body whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here are you getting me i live in a house that is secured digitally and these guys here are speaking and say lord help these people not to be carnal let them not miss heaven let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread yet we are all supposed to be believers and then there are others watch this that this is not even the object they are looking at they are looking at something else are you getting my point now they are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty they are looking at something entirely different and from what they are seeing they fish out all sorts of doctrines so they are not even here they are not even here they are not even here it's not different dimensions of the same truth this is what the bible calls another gospel are you getting my point i marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel and all of those people will come together under an umbrella called christianity we believe we are worshiping god we believe there are all kinds of christian sects for instance in this country is that not true there are generally acceptable sects there are controversial sects there are other sects that people say uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy for everybody when they say fill your form christian or non-christian you you all strike christian and the bible says there is a way everybody said there is a way now the trouble is everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues and it is important that you get to a point in your life this is why you find out have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or or maybe christmas or new year or something everyone comes with his perspective why are you spending twenty thousand naira on clothes somebody said because jesus died for me he didn't die to make me suffer and the other person is saying oh you oh boy who taught you this and the other person is saying continue the day there's no food to eat it my doctrine will make sense and this other person is now speaking 
and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels, there are, there are many. There are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. It was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord though. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, How are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books. That try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it. And truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it. And entered something else. There are others who read it. And nothing happened. Lift your hands and say Lord. Reveal the truth to me. 
please say it Lord reveal the truth to me Jesus said it this way I am the way not any prophet not any apostle not any teacher not any pastor I am the way you follow men you will follow a lot of things are you hearing what I'm saying if all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life. No matter how nice it sounds. There is something you can hear, no matter how ugly it sounds, it will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said, there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18 verse 24. Look up please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos. Born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. 
it's just that their perspectives this guy was eloquent all that he was taught he got a one in it but getting a one in one course or getting a in one course does not make you a graduate verse 26 and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like koinonia that's why you see brothers and sisters is part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage it's a privileged position not everybody is daft spiritually pastors never forget this when you stand there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking this is the situation the guy had been called a great man like we men of God are we just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great 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 one so according to that perspective i met people there who came down on their knees joshua selman i've been wanting to see you finally i get to see you yet ha, ya, 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 ya. he says whom when aquila and priscilla had that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day there were two strange men called aquila and priscilla and they kept quiet worship team sang and the guy wore suit he came up and he began to speak when aquila and priscilla heard they said wow this guy has great potentials but there is so much you do not know how do you feel when someone tells you that embarrassing right if you ever feel embarrassed get set for stunted growth are you getting my point now the bible says when they had what happened they took him like a boy. Ha! Amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking. You see, the beautiful thing about them is... They did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentleman, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. Areas of excesses. Areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody say your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. Boy, 
could it be brothers and sisters that you were taught about spiritual growth but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom and that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience and if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete what if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone are you hearing me that there are times that if need be you may have to die for your convictions if you open your heart to that dimension then you can enjoy the blessings of God buy all the flashy cars buy great houses but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant your Christian experience becomes more perfect are you getting me what if you have been taught that's the only devil you have is the devil in your mind there is no real devil anywhere there are no demons anywhere hmm. is that true what if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith and all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness rulers spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant christian it makes your christian experience richer are you hearing what i'm saying and it is for this cause ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please that he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens verse 10 verse 11 and he gave some what apostles and some and some and some and some perspectives he gave unto them he engraced his body with gifts listen to me revealed perspectives to them there are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church they can host a convention they can lift wheelchairs but they do not have the heart of a shepherd are you getting what i'm saying that is a dimension that is resident within a pastor in terms of office not just name i know we, we just have all the names mixed up but i mean in terms of office there are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders are you getting me the ability to stay with a congregation and teach them build them make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there if you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up there are people like that there are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life just locate them you're not going to hear any revelation i traveled somewhere and while i was there it was it was a, a, a conference and there were lots of prophets there hallelujah and i was amazed to see how these guys their understanding of the word was so little you know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny not it's not an insult i'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was but my goodness my goodness these people these people zeroed down the prophetic it was almost prophecy but at will i've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people but i'm not called into the prophetic office the grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you so for me i know that to prophesy it must happen with fasting and prayer it's not a gift for me i don't look at you now and say except i'm lying 
You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me, it's on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12, why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman. Arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok, and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe do not miss TV. The people don't listen. Let me go on this. Let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel. But you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. 
There are many people who will never listen to maybe some day I miss message. So please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access. There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry. Because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago. And it was so much. You know, then, now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, oh, stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. 
The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God, don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away, and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the, dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me, if I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is. It, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinchin or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues... Are you getting me? Is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time. I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we had to learn it. And then the man... That was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. That we, This memory you see, it's not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. 
Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? Fonne. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And I said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we're busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not... You go home straight there. You are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call. You know how the Bible says it. Rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to. Anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this. No. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you will have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car. Eh? Or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter tight. And the reason is that you are being a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving?
we were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God. Mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy. Very short guy. My goodness. Look. That guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And, and if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we're ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord... How are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor... You are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep 
to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology, it is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter and you say, when you, are free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people. Where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset. That everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet David danced. Yet it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God. I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now, and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me. Scared me in a way that I said, 
then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you, but God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel, these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who are people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Sama Deemi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. 
God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you. Lay hands on this sick body. And you say no Kai. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to. It's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual. We love things happening normally. Let it be happening the way I have always known it. And the moment I see another perspective, then it is not of God. It is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guest is carnal. Everybody is one before God. And in those churches when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. 
Once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview? You entered the interview as a man of God, not I, as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. And Young man, keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. This is what I believe. Because you were not taught the principles of excellence. You called it spirituality, but you've lost your job because of it. You were not taught diligence that a Christian is also an agent of national transformation. And time to walk in the office, you are fasting and praying. And you are not doing anything. You left your job undone. When it was time to promote you, you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit. Physically, they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are people who just sit down and feel, I know all the principles. I know the principles of business expertise. I understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around. You are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God. It convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that his hair had gone. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men. Oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be. That's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once. Four years ago, this man was a great man everywhere. But now, the lampstand has been taken. Let me tell you, God can take away the candlestick of men and give others. Read your Bible. He took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace. Whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, me, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems i could go that far because people made me look like god sent you to us and then i listened to an apostle of wisdom dr mike Mudok, and he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry he said never try to do to people what only god can do to them deliverance that was it 
I learned how to sleep soundly because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. I was wearing out. Literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble and the people have turned their back and they are insulting you because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom. To delay gratification. Until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp. No. I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose. That God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels. There are dimensions in the spirit. I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that i know that you've gotten something but i just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared to fulfill your assignment in life you need divine guidance oh this is very important you need divine guidance no man outgrows the need to be guided no man no matter how spiritual you are you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God only a fool in his heart will say there is no God confusion I wrote here is part of the limitation of mankind I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction divine direction in our lives divine direction Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet, a genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one-on-one -on -one session with us. And say by the grace of God. 
I will talk with you one on one and let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished. You want to know, am I still going to be in Zaria? Am I going to go somewhere? Is that the scripture? What did I say? Proverbs what? Oh, no, no. Psalm, sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. I'm sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. We need divine direction in our lives. You can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this because many of us right now we are in a straight betwixt you are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction you are ready to get married but you need divine direction as a gentleman you want to start putting structures to your life but you need divine direction and let me tell you something it is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you you will suffer you will struggle nothing will work when you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place everything is commanded to work for you there why do we need divine direction our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure this is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of Koinonia. I can look out and say, wow. There's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited and we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11 from verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not dark. That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know, whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, 
I will never marry a man who is rich. Who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that it's darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas, if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not. Listen. Listen. It's not an insult. Look up, please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are, no matter how apostolic you think you are, many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, 
You say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja. My Tama or somewhere there. Somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing. But God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be all not, where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet. But you see, listen, it is not of him that willeth. It is not of him that run it. If you cannot wait for God to direct you, I'll never forget I was rejoicing. The year we we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start, I was so happy because I was saying, Lord, my, share my assignment now is over. Let me run and find something very useful and do. Let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere. Let me just enjoy my life. And then God summoned a meeting at once. And when I went, I almost fainted the day God told me. Those who were around, my reaction, it was like, how about God? How about God? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says, stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners so God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit. Either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. 
John 16 verse 13 also. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters, dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt they were forewarned. Genesis 41. Don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings. The Bible says God came to him in a dream. And he received an impartation. And God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10. They all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream. In a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul. He's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking. And I was sharing with him about something. And while I was talking, to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been marching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling. When I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to... He used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. 
And one day, Mike Mudok called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15. I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so. So that our time is gone. I mean this project, this one now. 2 Kings 8 verse 7 to 15. Is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, The man of God is come. Hit the next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant. Take a present in thy hand. See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed? And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? inquire of the lord saying shall i recover from this disease i want to know so that i can put my house in order next verse please so hazael went hold on hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life hazael went to meet the man of god and took a present with him even of every good thing of damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said Thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch this, verse 10. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto the man of God, Thou mayest certainly recover. He said, How be it? Let me tell you the truth. I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it? The Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says, he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou will dash their children, and reap up their women with child. Prophecy, revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, the Lord had shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. 
But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry... I'm joking, no? You are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry and in 24 hours it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, Oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sent the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday? But what he is saying now. Listen. God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change. Sorry. But his plans can change. Please I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively. But I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil. He can decide that you go by road. So the destination you arrived. But the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out. Could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying. It proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, 
God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rhema that the word of God is saying concerning your life. Listen. Listen. Every one of you here who is in Christ is already a partaker of this divine life. Hold on please. Listen. Listen. The reality of divinity finding expression in humanity should not be doubted how did jesus enter the womb of mary that's the same way he entered your heart the way jesus entered the womb of mary is the same way don't you tell me how did it happen the answer the angel gave mary is still the answer i'm giving you how shall these things be the power of the highest just that I stand in front of an altar and I make a declaration I hand over my life to Jesus and while they are laughing at me a transaction is happening in heaven the same way the Holy Ghost came and brought Jesus the word into the womb of Mary now he's arrived with his life hear me please sit down let me explain something for you if you do not understand this forget about a life of victory this is more than some charismatic talk no this is more than just some pentecostal talk this is truth from scripture so when that life comes the spirit of the living god comes to tabernacle within a mortal man a mortal man born of a woman i know that you may come from a yoruba region Igbo region northern region european region american region help them please but the moment you make this declaration the bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation you are connected back to your original place with all the benefits that follow that place let me tell you when you know this you will spend your life helping the lost to find jesus it's more than just evangelism you are helping them there is no other help that is greater than connecting people to Jesus. Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody he raised from the dead still died. But there is something you receive and not perish. If you receive healing, you will perish. If you receive breakthrough, you can still perish. But the life of God. Now, please listen to me listen to me when you receive this supernatural life the next assignment of the holy spirit watch this because you see the activity of the new birth does not necessarily affect your mind the activity of the new birth is a spiritual affair so your mind may be unfruitful many times you just recited something a preacher said to recite and you didn't feel anything didn't fall most times didn't stand you just felt the peace of god and they clapped for you and you followed someone and chances are you can downplay the miracle that just happened to you because it was so easy and so cheap in one minute even if a room has been dark for 24 years the moment you put light light will not start and say let me respect the darkness in that instant the light comes so both the room that has been dark for two hours ten days hundred years they all react the same way to light but when that light comes watch this just because you are a recipient of that life does not make you walk in the liberty of that life let's establish a few things here number one we have been called into a supernatural life based on the authority of scripture 
the church of the lord jesus is a supernatural church the supernatural should be nothing strange for us through us and with us salvation the new birth experience itself is supernatural that's what gives us the basis for manifesting the supernatural however just because you are a recipient of the life of god through the new birth experience does not mean you will walk in it experientially there is the dynamics of the supernatural and that's what i want to expose you to because there are many people as true as all i've said is you may spend the rest of your life living and allowing your life to be a misrepresentation of the power the grace the glory of god and tonight let god be true and every man a liar. If what I've said and all I've said is true, why then do we have preachers that are powerless, businessmen that are powerless, career people that are powerless, believers that are powerless, everything natural, the sequence of your life natural. There is nothing extraordinary in your life. When I look at your life and if it is true that you've been grafted into Christ through the activity of new birth, I should find that signature of the supernatural trailing you like a shadow, following you. A week should not pass without you having a supernatural testimony. Okay, apostle, I went in the midst of people and I'm listening. Uh-huh, what happened? And they just pushed me. Uh-huh, and what else? Yeah, I return back home. No, no, that story is not complete. Apostle, I got to a place that was full of unbelievers. Uh huh. I'm listening. What happened? They looked at me. We just said we just exchanged pleasantries, and I left. You left. Nothing happened from you, through you, to them. Jesus was not revealed. Nothing happened. The sick were not healed. Demons were roaming around and you were there. And you left. You waved them. They waved you back. How about conferences that are put together? And all kinds of attendants are there. Both humans and demons. Day one. Day two. Day three. Day four. They even came near the altar with the individuals who dropped the offering. And went back and nothing changed. At the end of it, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, such an expensive confession, the love of God, and we call it the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. And at the end of it, those demons still go back. How about missionaries who go to crusade grounds and they come in the name of Jesus, they say, and they preach and they tell the people that Jesus is Lord and when they are done people just sit down and laugh at them I don't mean to be sarcastic but how about ministries that share boundaries with other facilities that may not be Christ-like in their operation and yet for years as that church is there there has not been any impact around listen if you understand this you will know that you have been given the power that transform people where did you keep the reality of that life it's not just by bragging and saying i'm a man of god i'm apostle no great is the mystery of godliness god lives in me it is true brothers and sisters find a way of believing this god lives in me it was not so when i was born because i was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life i encountered him jesus who is the son of the living god today he lives in me and i believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything I'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of jesus so when someone comes to me and says apostle nothing is working in my life 
from pillar to post my life is empty what do you think i should do when i see such a person i am happy that you have met me because i am a blessing to you i can't be a cause me and jesus can fail together me alone can fail i agree he will never fail but since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant inseparable two of us cannot fail together you carry this mentality when you get into an office you enter not as an employee you enter as an ark you have been entering as one who was employed who is being paid x amount of naira or dollars or pounds that is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system but when you know that beyond salary i am a blessing doors that has been trying the company has tried and tried to get those doors open suddenly when god wants to bless that company he gives them the privilege of employing you when you enter that office you don't have to tell them you have come the manager returns back and says how many staff do we have oh 26 now 27 who was the last person employed and they said one one gentleman like that okay i've noticed in the last one week something has happened here something supernatural has happened have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came please hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you truth from scripture you are not just an employee no you are not just a business partner what you are bringing is more than capital what you are bringing is the presence divinity the supernatural they bring you into a ministry as a pastor you are not just one of the 30 pastors no with all due respect every other person can believe what they believe but you know there is an implication i'm sharing with you my mindset i'm sharing with you my beliefs the mystery of godliness the mystery of godliness your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders your life becomes a, a marvel first to you not because you are anything special in yourself ladies and gentlemen what i'm teaching you these are not just these are not cunningly devised fables these are truths that are provable god can live in a man you can have something you were not born with you can have something that was not given to you in a university you can have something that was not given to you in your nation the reality of the life of god at work in a human spirit listen please hear me listen to me our fathers of faith men like tl osborne men like rw shambach these men and women carried this revelation they came to africa they shifted climate with power and with grace ordinary men mighty god ordinary men powerful god ordinary men all wise god ordinary men el shaddai I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord because our cities and respectfully speaking our churches are losing the supernatural element there's all kinds of cunningly divine fable, device fables manipulations of darkness the sick remain sick the oppressed remain oppressed all kinds of stories hear me 
Now, please listen. In addition to the reality of eternal life, as you walk with God, you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you. Not just as one who brought the life of God, but as God himself. He begins to lead you through a process. He does not just reveal power. You shall receive power after, after, after. God does not empower you when he's building you. He empowers you when he's sending you. So when you come to Jesus, stop looking for power. Come to me. It is the making that happens. Empowerment is at the point where you are being sent, not when you are made. Listen to me, because something is about to open up in your life. Believe me when I tell you this. Many of here, you here looking at me are men and women of God. Most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of being disciplined young men and women. Most of what we do in church is not, it's not the supernatural. It's just a manifestation of flesh from ill-cultured men and women of God. Display of the flesh for the purpose of self-glorification. That your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness not because of what you are saying but because of what you are carrying what you are carrying first before what you are saying you'll be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit all kinds of impartations all kinds of liftings this is not about joshua selman this is every believer's heritage in christ but hear me brothers and sisters there is one thing i know and this is why you came to church today listen to me somewhere in your christian experience when god is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces now listen to my story there was a time I have shared with you a few of my visions here just pay attention I'm in this vision and I'm seeing an endless sea of people from the north to the south the east and the west and then these people begin to cry to me and say apostle there is no food and there is no water and then I said who is the cause and they were all pointing to me it was a whole generation I said me why would I be that wicked and they said you are the one and then I made up my mind that I was going to go but I had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me they were trying to pursue me that's what even took me to that room to be hiding it was upstairs I made up my mind that if I perish I perish but I have to save these people as soon as I open the door here stands this giant ancient man with beards now I know he was the Holy Spirit but he stood there and he said give me your hands he said we will walk together my hands were so tiny in his hands and yet he held me and we began to move we began to move jumping from one level to the other i've shared with you my encounters because you are about to receive something tonight i was worshiping the lord many years ago and i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and then the lord speaks to me and says son from today i give you my presence as a gift I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying. And then I see this huge being standing. And he said, from today he will walk with you. I said, what is his name? And he said, he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. Walk with you. 
This is why you see some of these manifestations. Brothers and sisters, everything God gives a man is meant for the body. It's not the, I told you the days of superstar Christianity is over. We are too serious to just be glorifying flesh. No, the kingdom requires seriousness. If you carry this mentality today, brothers and sisters, you go to a place where there are demon spirits, it's impossible for that place to be quiet. You don't have to be preaching. Just remember the ark has come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Look at me. The next time they ask you, what is your contribution in this company? Tell them I bring the ark. What is your contribution in this business? There are five business partners. We don't know why you are here. Because intellectually, we don't think you have any relevance. Tell them, there is something that I bring. The Ark. Karis Kodeba Lakatosia. I bring to this company the presence of God. I bring to this home the presence of God. I bring to this ministry the presence of God. I bring to this relationship the presence of God. Hear me? Please look at me. Listen carefully. You know, we live in a world that likes to bully people based on all kinds of privileges. And it's easy to look at someone and say you've never flown abroad. You come from a village. You are so dull. You are so daft. And the believer stands full of the presence of God and looking weak, feeling inferior, feeling beggarly. I was teaching a school of ministry students. Oh, there is what you have as a believer. I agree you may not have had the privilege to go around the world. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior background. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior sociological orientation. Oh, but there is one thing you have. 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 The presence of God. The life that brings the supernatural. The life of the supernatural. He put it in you. As you move, God is moving. As you talk, God is talking. As you stretch your hands. Listen, listen. Look at me. We are going to pray. Do you know how arrogant it will sound for an ordinary human being to just suddenly believe that these are my hands, you are seeing them. What is special about these hands? What suddenly makes you believe that these hands can heal? Without this revelation, it is pride. Hands that you've been touching every day. A life that you've been touching every day. Can I tell you this? Let no one see you as a disadvantage again. You are not a minus to any system if you understand what I'm teaching you. I have seen many, many sick people healed in my life. I have seen many people delivered. When men give the credit to me, I feel so embarrassed because they are not exactly right. men who have understood this they have changed their society and changed territories carrying this gift of god to the nations 
next time you are going for a crusade you are not just carrying a salmon as that plane is flying you they are getting god to that region as soon as your feet steps on that ground expect things to happen men should be the last of the people you impact begin to impact the spiritual sphere you have arrived there by the power of the holy spirit supernatural changes begin to happen and you shift climates spare me a few more minutes please sit down let me teach you one or two things and then we'll pray my spirit is fired up tonight now listen carefully there are three revelations and three keys that sponsor the release of the supernatural in as much as it is true that you have been called into supernatural living and the church is a supernatural church there is an explanation as to our powerlessness there is an explanation as to the fact that we are unable to produce the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord most times believers just believe that results end in the realm of finances or some kind of intellectual achievement so chances are that when you are financially blessed or you are intellectually sound you believe that you have all of the supernatural finding expression that is not true that is not true the first thing i want to teach you is how the supernatural is manifested you see in this kingdom the supernatural is a synergy between the word of god and the spirit of god the union of the word and the spirit i would learn this in a reinhard bonke crusade in 2004 I went to Joss from Kaduna to attend the Renhard Bonke crusade when he came. I was in that field. I remember. And I saw this man who came all the way from overseas. And the ground was packed with probably tens of thousands of people. Hungry people desperate to receive from this veteran of the gospel who had traveled from nation to nation and i was there scattered in the crowd i remember standing there with hunger i was already in ministry i had already seen the power of god to a measure but i knew that there had to be more and he preached in his manner a very simple message and this is where some of us that god has committed a bit of the grace for revelation usually we do not have the patience to hear people sound very simple because it almost looks insulting very simple childlike kindergarten kind of expression but when he was done listen carefully he was about to minister the baptism and then to pray for the sick and he was just trying to take water I was part of the tens of thousands of crowds suddenly my eyes opened right there in that crusade ground i thought other people were seeing it suddenly i see this bird as big as this auditorium if not bigger than it just moving round hovering around the entire space where the crusade was happening it had all kinds of silvery bands tied to its wings just like that it was not flapping them it was just moving I was looking what is this brilliance beauty as though the sun was in the bed and then the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters why because the word of god was about to come and the holy ghost taught me in that encounter that it is the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit that produces the miraculous it was not in a bible study session i was there having an encounter in a crusade ground that's why you see when people come to church and are distracted it's a spirit because you don't know the moment when your word will come i can be preaching now and in the midst of my sermon god can open your eyes and be showing you something else 
when I saw that, do you know this? When I was back from that vision, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I turned. I knew I had caught something. I knew that I was about to step into the realm of signs, of wonders. And I saw people healed. I saw all kinds of dramatic miracles. And I said, my God. So I can tell you this. Listen to me. If you want to manifest the supernatural that you have received, it is a union of the strength of the word of God in you and the ministry of the spirit. This is what separates miracles from superstition. The word and the spirit. Now there, there is a big problem with the body of Christ as far as the dynamics of the manifestation especially the charismatics and the Pentecostals. It's like there is a group that chose the spirit. We are the spirit people. We pray in tongues, we pray, we prophesy, we do all of this. Doesn't matter whether we have respect for scripture or not. I'm not being sarcastic. You know I'm sent to the body. And then there are those who are the word people. Forget about all those spirit things. Just teach the word. Both of them are incomplete. It is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come. It is the spirit of God who hovered around the face of the waters. But do you know when the spirit of God hovered around the face of the water, creation did not happen until the word came and Elohim said, light be. But if Elohim had spoken and the spirit of God did not hover, there still will not be a miracle. What does that tell you? There are two principal tools or two principal platforms that the believers both access and manifest the supernatural. Number one is the ministry of the word. What does that mean? The word of God is powerful because all creation happens through the word. Let me give you a few scriptures. Let me a few minutes. Colossians 1.16. Media, let's work together. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Please look up. It says, for by him were all things created. How many things were created? Things that are in heaven. Things that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Look how powerful the word is. So the word of God can create visible things like a job. Visible things. Like physical healing to a body. Visible things like opportunities. Invisible things. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. All things were created by him and for him. John chapter 1 and verse 3. A scripture that we've worked on in this house all things were made by him and without him that means outside of his influence and outside of his partnership was not anything made that was made Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person please look up it says and upholding how many things all things by the word of his power he holds all things including the person to help you he holds him by the word of his power including your destiny helper including the form that has your contract written on it it is held by the word of his power Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 Paul teaching us on faith he says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means let it be let it not be new to you the material realm came from the immaterial realm just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal it is only unseen to the optical eye but it is on is real very very real so the union of the word listen according to colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 the bible declares that the word of christ should dwell in us richly in all wisdom so the more 
the word of God becomes your obsession. Listen carefully. The more you learn scripture, the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word, you are empowering yourself to manifest the supernatural. Let me tell you what happens in the body of Christ. And this is why there is a high margin of error in our administering the supernatural. We ignore the word. All we look for is anointing. All we look for is vessels. All we look for is a bottle of oil or a bottle of some kind of emblem. I'm not saying those things are wrong in themselves. But all things start with the word. The more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word, the more you are opening yourself to the supernatural. Question, how did wine come about when the feast Remember in, in, in the wedding in, 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 in John chapter 2, the first miracle of Jesus, according to the synoptic account of John, water turned to wine. It always starts as water. If you want wine, get water first. If it is God that will turn that water to wine, if it's God that will give you wine, it will not start as wine. It will start as water. It is the word of God that you must have. And then as you go, that word is now turned to wine. If it's a job that you need, if it's God that will give you that job, it will not start with a job. It will start with the word. It is as you engage in the word, the word will now change to a job. Are you seeing it now? If it is breakthrough you want and you go to God and say, Lord, all I want is breakthrough. God says, go back to the word. It is as the word prevails in your heart, the word will now become that breakthrough if you look for things outside of the world you may never find them it is the world that metamorphoses into those things the word of god number two is the ministry of the holy spirit we see the classic dynamics of manifesting the supernatural in ezekiel chapter 37 please give it to us very quickly ezekiel 37 let's start from verse 1 Ezekiel 37 and the hand of the Lord was upon me the Bible says and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry verse 3 he said unto me son of man question now can these bones live and the prophet answered O Lord God thou knowest verse 4 he said prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye bones hear whose word you do the speaking but the word is not your own when you speak your word it will not happen God is the word but you are the voice like John said if you want to be the word yourself that one you are you are in trouble already the realm of the spirit will not respect your word it respects God's word even if a donkey speaks God's word, the realm of the spirit will obey it. Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause what? Breath. Are you seeing now that the first miracle that happened was breath to enter them first if there is no breath there cannot be life and you shall leave verse 6 and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall leave and ye shall know that I am the Lord verse 7 so I prophesied not as I wanted as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And bones came together, bone to his bone. That means, watch this. If I disregard the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I do not grow in my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It is true that I am a recipient of the life of God, that divinity resides within me, but I may never be able to manifest that reality. Listen carefully. Most believers continue to brag and boast that they are recipients of the life of God. And it's a fact based on what the Bible says. 
but you see let me tell you the truth releasing the reality of that life comes when you understand these dynamics the word of god the ministry of the word you must engage with the word you must stay with the word what is the benefit of the word number one the word of god shows you how god operates number two the word of god exposes you to the boundaries of god's commitment to you god is only committed to what he said to you not what you want it is your assignment to find out what he said that relates to what you want god is all powerful but that does not just mean he does anything anyhow no he is regulated by his word the word of god defines the boundary and the coordinates of god's power god's power does not just operate randomly his word so if what you want is lifting you cannot have lifting until you can find from scripture where god committed himself to you on that wise is there any assurance based on the word of god that he said he will lift you yes there is such an assurance number one the bible says the path of the justice as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day number two deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it says if it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day it says that the lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth there is a condition is there any scripture that supports your advocating your rising yes yes arise shine for your light is come so you can carry these scriptures now you have satisfied the word component now you have to engage the spirit just because you have found the word does not mean the supernatural will manifest you now god is bound by his word because he has chosen to exalt his word even above his reputation i have found the word that guarantees that god can lift me that god will lift me based on his desire for me you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit it is the spirit that gives life to that letter hallelujah are we together now one of the ways we engage the ministry of the holy spirit for our profiting is through the priesthood ministry of prayer write it down the priesthood ministry of prayer you will never truly manifest the supernatural if you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer do you know why he gave us the prayer language do you realize that the prayer language is connected to the holy spirit ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come in acts chapter 2 we do not see them receiving power we see them receiving tongues but what he said he never said you shall receive tongues he said you shall receive power but in acts chapter 2 we see them receiving tongues that means there is a relationship between that language of the spirit and the release of spiritual power if i tell you for instance that i am going to give you a thousand dollars a thousand dollars anything that comes from me to you is a thousand dollars suddenly you see someone holding a gift pack coming to you what should you suspect is in it because my commitment to you was not a gift packed my commitment to you was a thousand dollars so if I'm bringing you a gift pack a wise person will open it to say the thousand dollars you said must be there so if he said i will give you power and yet what you got in the very next chapter is a language there must be a relationship between that language and the power he said are we together yes most people do not pray and yet they want to command superior levels of the supernatural we have agreed here that god is not a magician can i tell you sincerely a generation that does not pray will truly be a powerless generation jesus himself recognized the presence of principalities and powers the bible says he is head of them 
you must get to a point in your life where you know how to engage the ministry of the holy spirit engaging the ministry of the holy spirit is not just saying holy spirit come no no you engage him as you build intimacy in prayer and you take advantage of that prayer language to release superior spiritual power power that can change circumstances the lord is my shepherd you are a man of god and you are trusting god to have a supernatural ministry there is no superstition about it it is the union of the word and the union of the spirit the holy spirit engaged in prayer then the holy spirit engaged in worship do you know let me tell you sincerely this our generation does not understand how worship changes people we sing a lot of songs but very few people understand the role of worship in spiritual empowerment we have mastered prayer but not worship i can pray for five hours eight hours ten hours but chances are if you worship for 15 minutes anything after that you consider it a distraction say look this worship is okay i've had the song i know it let me pray oh dear worship is a powerful atmosphere listen when you when you worship the lord is the protocol of the presence you now begin to create the atmosphere for the presence of god to be made manifest this is true he will not suffer my food to be i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me mortal man awesome god mortal man awesome god there is nothing special to us and in us by ourselves but when we learn how to engage that atmosphere the miraculous is atmosphere dependent you must learn how to not only carry the ark but carry the climate scientists today are laboring so much to master the art of simulating climate regardless seasons so they can make rainy season happen in dry season they don't there are i studied years ago a group of superstitious people in a part of africa called rainmakers these are people who know how to fraternize with spirits and change climate and you will watch videos where they would come and dance and do all kinds of things that don't make sense suddenly you begin to hear thunder and clouds forming and then rain comes they call them rain makers when you learn worship you become a real spiritual rainmaker. you can make any dry season can i challenge you go to an atmosphere where it looks like god cannot move go to an atmosphere where it looks like people there are times you get to a place where you see that there's no faith in the people they look at you and even you you wonder what brought you there i teach you learn to be a spiritual rainmaker. carry your climate with you don't just carry your bible alone carry your climate with you and when you lift your voice to the god of heaven and immerse yourself in worship i do not know anybody who truly works appreciably in the level of the supernatural that does not value worship genuine worship genuine worship genuine worship and you're setting your atmosphere can i tell you the best way is to combine all three worship prayer word fire oh dear you are praying and worship is playing and sometimes scripture is playing too don't say will i understand leave your mind this is spirit interaction how many of you have listened to messages and fell asleep and in the realm of the spirit you continued listening to it including the encounters and the impartation in that message you get up and you know that heaven is in this room i'm not alone i'm not alone i'm not alone powerful impartations 
saturate your atmosphere with worship and something is happening to you as a man of God you stand to minister the word of God and you are ministering with power as a business person saturate yourself with that atmosphere of heaven and go to the boardroom and you sit down and you are speaking they are looking at you but it's not you they are seeing their spirits are seeing someone else their minds cannot articulate it what is it about this man that we are seeing these are the mysteries of the kingdom now please hear me there is such an empowerment and a grace in addition to all that i've shared there is truly an engracing that god can give an individual for the supernatural for signs and wonders how does this grace work when this grace comes upon you number one this grace causes you to desire the word more than ever before this grace causes you to desire the presence of god more than ever before this grace causes you to desire fellowship with god it's not just a grace that makes you to go and start laying hands on the sick the grace operates by working on your desire the first way you know you have carried that grace is there is an unusual desire for the word of god there is no such thing as no time an unusual desire for prayer an unusual desire for fellowship you can lock yourself for a whole day as though you're a madman there is a grace that is working in you i have spent my life seeing this grace work this is why we rejoice every time we have the privilege of traveling from nation to nation and from region to region every time i prepare to come here i am happy because i know that i am not coming alone you are not just coming to listen to another sermon no this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender this is the place where my life is changed listen whenever we're preparing for service we don't have to find out what your problem is we just have to find out if he's coming with us I cannot begin to find out who is there how sick how oppressed that is a labor God did not give you all you need to do is to know that you are carrying his majesty and then in addition the graces that he has placed upon your life and you can say let's go and you can step into an auditorium like this having people following from across the globe following from all over the city and you can dare tell people that Jesus is real you can dare tell people that he can turn their lives around and the Holy Spirit moves through your words and begins to produce supernatural results some of you come and you sit down and from prayer testimonies something is happening to you you cannot even begin to explain i've been going to church but what is happening to me i will tell you is the supernatural it is not only the three-dimensional realm that works here i assure you this is mount zion this is koinonia an innumerable company of angels the spirits of just men made perfect jesus himself the firstborn of the begotten he is here in the midst of his people in addition to all of these things 
when God granted me the grace for signs and wonders my life changed if you do not have the grace for signs and wonders especially if you're a minister of the gospel the supernatural you will live your life in jealousy and envy and anger you will not have results it's true and you see the thing about the supernatural is that if it is there it is there if it is not there it's not there it's as simple and honest as that many of you have come from homes representing businesses representing different career representing different situations i cannot promise you that i can come to your house i will not even attempt it i will not promise you that i can see you one on one but i have a promise there is something you can be given something greater than me something better than me it is the grace of god the grace that can empower you to walk in the supernatural it is a grace god has so lavishly placed upon this life and placed upon this ministry you know you are operating in the supernatural because your results happen in astronomical proportions proportions that does not look fair then you know God is in that equation. One plus one minus God is two. Satan can even make it zero. Without God, if you want ten, it must be five plus five, nine plus one, eight plus two. But when you bring the supernatural into that equation, even one plus zero can be ten. Because there is a factor that can change the calculation. It is based on that that frail men like us can have the audacity to tell the nations we present you Jesus. And usually they will laugh except that we are not alone. Hear me. I bring you a cure to fear. A cure to mediocrity. A cure to feeling I am a second class citizen. There is a grace that can land upon your life and literally turn you to a sign and a wonder and the way god imparts these graces is that in addition to that which salvation has done all graces come from god through men to men it's time for you to begin to produce real results so that people don't begin to doubt you listen you are a man of god you're going to get into a life of trouble if you keep saying many things that don't happen the world that we live in today is an audacious world it's not as silent and sympathetic as it used to be but there is a grace that can empower you that as you say it you see it because when god said it he saw it Are we blessed we're going to spend a few minutes praying and then i'm going to pray for you from the depth of my heart the lord gave us an instruction i really want you to carry this grace listen ladies and gentlemen you will marvel and wonder at what your results become like truly speaking this is no flattery if it is the lord's doing it must be marvelous in your eyes there are some of you september will look like 10 years put together one month one month one month looking like 10 years together and the next time they ask you how has this thing happened in your life be very quick to tell them that it is because of the jesus factor the presence factor the supernatural factor you just started a ministry how come in four months God is doing this through you and you can tell them honestly by my strength I can do nothing but I have accessed a grace from heaven how come your children your children who did not used to do well what suddenly happened to them 
how come the academics are changing i know these children they were also classmates with my children and you tell them they came for service and something came upon their lives one story and we'll pray a very true story many years ago i always enjoyed the privilege of what we know to be first position or best in class and all of those things and then one time in secondary school i was to receive a root shock and a gentleman who was a dear friend you know that year i don't know what happened and i went back to third and the gentleman took first and he didn't add up to me because we were we were friends and we're wonderful people you can imagine you know just children thinking and then i returned home i was feeling sad and i was saying what what would, what would have been the reason and then the gentleman told me something then my goodness there was only one living faith branch then in Jos. and he told me he said he remembered that not too long before the exams all he remembers is that they did an anointing service and they gathered all of them together and then oil just came on them and declarations were made i said really when i learned this i said oh joshua selman my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed that was the extra factor in the life of that gentleman he came to church in addition to his study a man of god declared over his life and placed something upon his life that beat us hands down we did our best it just did not work the same way something is coming on you this night that when it comes upon your life even though you just came here with your intellect alone you came here with your connection but i stand before the god of heaven this grace that comes upon ordinary men and turns their lives around hear me for some of you when this grace comes upon you people who have long forgotten you believe what i tell you supernatural achievements by the spirit things will just begin to happen some of you by this grace you will step into ease ease that you may not be able to explain ease that you cannot explain you believe that when it's time to pray please no moving around don't distract yourself this is a very prophetic moment in the next five minutes i'd like you to pray the prayer point is lord give me an encounter let this grace come upon my life lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray please pray please pray supernatural it's time to command the supernatural supernatural prosperity supernatural wisdom supernatural ministry supernatural evangelism supernatural business supernatural parenting pray Shketapakatakatopakatos, <laughs> <laughs> 
Following online, make sure you're praying. Lord, I am ready to step into a supernatural life. The reality manifesting, commanding the supernatural. Man of God, pray. Believers, pray. Let ordinary living come to an end. Ordinary ministry come to an end. Ordinary business come to an end. Ordinary parenting come to an end. I step into the realm of miracles, signs, wonders. Results that confound principalities and powers. Supernatural music ministry. Are you praying? Don't be distracted. Pray. Supernatural results by the Spirit of the Living God. It's time to shift to shift levels in the spirit. It's time to begin to manifest the supernatural. It's time for your life to be an epistle, a testament of God's wonder working power. Are you praying? <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. 
Jesus please listen to me I'm about to pray for you but let me tell you this in this end time those who will really carry the grace for signs and wonders must be people who are serious with Jesus very serious very hungry very passionate more than titles more than church more than emoji more than apostle more than prophet i want to pray for you now we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you. So you'll do what you do. We're in a mood. This is a mood. We are here. This is a moon. When Peter and John came to the man at Get Beautiful, he said, Silver and gold I do not have. He said, But such as I have, give I unto you. Listen to me. I don't mean to be arrogant, but let me tell you this when it has to do with the supernatural, I know what I'm saying. I have enjoyed the message of God even on this wise. I know what a supernatural life will do to you. Your ministry, your business, your life. It is Jesus we are looking up to, but it is men that he uses. I'd like you to open your heart in the next two or three minutes believe with your heart just help those under the anointing i have had many encounters in my life i've only said a few of them it is on the authority of scripture the ministry of the holy spirit and the privilege of these encounters i myself have been a recipient of the graces of those that have gone ahead it is not everything that has come just directly by my own personal encounter we have met many people there are those who have gone ahead even in ministry there are those who have demonstrated a supernatural life though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before we are not the first you are not the first to do supernatural business 
John D. Rockefeller. These are men and women who encountered grace. You're not the first to do supernatural ministry. Oh dear. Scripture and history is full of men and women who shook the earth in their lifetime. You're not the first to have a supernatural career. Ask Daniel, through the reign of four kings, he remained on top. Regardless who was in power, he remained on top. There was a grace. And they said an excellent spirit, not an excellent talent, an excellent spirit was at work in him. You're not the first to be intellectually supported by the spirit of God. There were Hebrew boys who were 10 times better. 10 times better. Let me pray for you now. Father, let this grace come upon your people. Let everyone under the sound of my voice, by the privilege of this grace, by the, mis the ministry of this angel of the Lord's presence, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, that everyone under the sound of my voice, at the count of three, may this grace come upon you, may it follow you, may it produce results. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace in business. Supernatural business. Supernatural ministry. Kaparos Ketegetebata. Signs. Signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Let those that have heard that to Rakatos Ketebrekatekata. I command those gates be open here and Tita. In the name of Jesus Christ, be open here and Tita. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the night, manifest the supernatural. For many of you who are in ministry here, I anoint you. Go back to your pulpit. Let fire begin to fall upon your altars in unusual proportions. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has been happening in your life by a natural sequence, we place grace upon it and we command in the name of Jesus quantum leaps, geometric proportions of results. Where you have been praying naturally, I place grace upon you. May your ministry of prayer step into a supernatural dimension. May your ministry of word study step into a supernatural dimension. There are many of you here, God has called you into the healing ministry. But as it is, you have not really seen that dimension, the tangibility of the healing oil. It has not come upon you. I open this jar in the realm of the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, like Samuel unto David, I place that oil upon you. Receive that grace now. Young and old, man of God, woman of God, prophet, apostle pastor intercessor receive that grace i release you into a strange healing ministry in the name of jesus we have a financial series coming but let me pray over your finances can i be sincere with you there is such a thing called supernatural finances there really is such a thing. Parasco de Shalatos Kadebrande Kaprahaskia. Krakata Pakarosasi Getaberetusia. The mystery of the raven that brings bread for Elijah at Brook Cherry. The mystery of the five loaves and two fish that can feed 5,000. There is supernatural finances 
in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands from today in the name of Jesus I measure a thousand cubits by grace I push you into a deeper level of supernatural finances provide value at a supernatural dimension in the name of Jesus Christ one last prayer for many of you you have been making progress but the progress is too slow relative to your destiny in the name of Jesus just help those under the anointing my goodness hear me wherever you should have been but because you did not have the supernatural advantage you have not arrived here yet i stand by the rod of the prophetic in the name of jesus between now and the end of september please hear me i stand as touching the god of my covenant go forward go forward i push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ help them please go forward in the name of jesus christ go forward go forward go forward in your career go forward in business go forward in ministry go forward can I be sincere with you? This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress. I pray for you again. Whatever has made the pace of your acceleration slow, the same grace that came upon Elijah and made him to run and overtake the chariots of Ahab, may that grace come upon you right now. And every force that we want to fight this prophecy in the name of Jesus by the privilege of God's grace he has given us the key of David the key that opens a door that no man can shut and can shut a door that no man can open we open that door and it remains open day and night we open that door it remains open day and night by the mystery of the key of David that door will never be shut day or night in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus wave your hands to Jesus as an act of worship let's wave your hands to the king of kings thank you thank you Jesus for changing my level thank you for giving me a new story remember Thanksgiving is the last digit to the faith equation Lord we thank you we wave our hands in worship thanking you indeed it is a good thing to come to the house of the Lord hallelujah now please listen just final admonishment do not walk out of this place after sharing the grace as if it's not church you came to because many people even under this atmosphere once you are done you return back to your vomit again and now begin to act in a natural carnal way realize that you are always supernatural protect the things that come out of your lips don't just speak as if you are not born again don't just act as if the holy spirit is not at work in you it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them hallelujah let me make an altar call now inside outside all the overflows there are people here 
whilst you heard me talking about the supernatural I told you that the first basis of the supernatural is salvation your encounter with Jesus and I know that you are here and you've never truly made that decision for Jesus perhaps you've been coming to church perhaps you even come from a Christian family perhaps you've been around men of God but you're saying apostle I want to start afresh with Jesus or you are here saying I've given my life to Jesus Christ but as it is right now I truly do not know the way my life is going I need a renewal I need a rededication I'm going to count one to five I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand here one run to Jesus Help them, help them, help that lady, please. Help her, help her so she doesn't fall. In. Run to Jesus, inside and outside. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours it's yours forever it's yours it's yours it's yours whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender let that be your confession join them if you are still coming whatever you ask of me i surrender one more time it's a prayer from the depth of your heart whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender can i tell you this only God can tell the joy that is in my heart every time I see people come to stand and make this declaration for Jesus every time we pray for this every week we cry for this at the back of our preaching we expect this to happen souls running to Jesus genuinely genuinely I want to salute every single one of you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears he can always give you a new beginning i can tell you this is a family of faith there are many of you whilst you are crying god is seeing a prophet an apostle he's seen a mighty general lift your right hand very high above your head and i want you to say this convincingly knowing that jesus is here let it be from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are my god my savior my lord and my king tonight i declare that my life is no longer mine i hand it over to you in exchange for your own life I receive into my spirit eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life say after me the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father I pray and thank you for these ones Jesus for these ones that you have brought to yourself we honor you and we thank you by the authority of Scripture I decree and declare that your sins are forgiven and that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight I commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit and I pray that you will become mighty vessels in the hands of God in the name of Jesus Christ 
I decree and declare that everything that is not of God in and around your life, let it go now once and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I welcome you to the family of faith. And I declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations to every one of you. Now, very quickly, there are counselors waving the placard at my right, which is your left. I'd like you to please move in concert. Be, be careful with the crane so you don't injure yourself. Please, all of you, this way to my left. Let's celebrate them as they go. You'll just meet with a few counselors and you'll be back. Now, if any of them stood up close to you and they did not carry their bags, their Bible, I forgot to say this. Please make sure you protect it for them whilst they are away. Hallelujah. Celebrate them as they go. Amen. Now, just, just two quick announcements. Please let me have your attention. Thank you for your patience. Just two very quick announcements and then we're done for tonight. The first is our school of ministry. Now, as you know, we've been running a school of ministry for eight years now. And we're really proud of what God is making out of our students. And um, it's usually part of the program to have what we call a practicum. A practicum is a time where I haven't built the students to a measure. We allow them, um, we engage them in the work here in Koinonia. They can run a whole service or do something just to build them. And um, by the grace of God, we're happy. I'm not sure that I have the date here. Maybe I'm sure I threw the paper somewhere. But then, the practicum for this set will be on the 10th of October. The 10th of October, right here, it will be a koinonia service. So please pray along, support them. Some of you, they are your loved ones. Please cooperate with them. They are going to be having engaging moments from now till that time. Please do understand and lend them your support. And then by the grace of God, same October, by his grace, we're going to be graduating them, both campuses, both here. And Zaria will be graduating our students in October. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, there's a special announcement coming from the worship team. The worship team is pleased to announce that is finally opened and is looking for skilled instrumentalists and vocalists those interested listen carefully those interested should please send i'm told maybe a one minute video to eni worship team as one word eni worship team at gmail.com or you can do well to wait i think if you have the time you can wait just at my left and then you'll see some of the leaders they'll guide you on what to do they are particularly looking looking for skilled instrumentalists and vocalists you are here you are in this house and god has graced you on that wise please do well to see them and trust the lord to bless you and to help you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah have you been blessed tonight we thank god for the showers of blessings we receive them as confirmations that you have stepped into a supernatural dimension in the name of jesus christ um the next announcement is security. Now, God has granted us grace. We're a very large house. There are overflows down to the basement and outside. And I want to lend my voice with the security department to encourage everyone that please, every time you come for Koinonia, number one, realize that you are ultimately responsible for any and all items that you come with. We've had an occasion where items get missing and all of that. Please do well to make sure that um, if and when you pack your vehicles, walk with what the security department tells you and then do well to lock your vehicles. And then when in the auditorium or around the facility, please make sure that your bags, if you came with valuables, make sure that you always keep an eye on them, especially because of some of the manifestations that happen. We do not want a situation where we have people coming in to come and steal. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't be but we're a responsible ministry and will not rule that out. It is possible that these kinds of things can arise as is the case with most um, very large ministries. So I want to encourage you to please 
be security conscious even whilst you are here. We have our CCTVs and then we have the um, protocol and security department working together to make sure that lives and property, we also have the force and the rest, but at least do your best to contribute, lend your attention and your participation to make sure that everything um, that should be protected is protected. And then as much as possible, if you can, uh, as much as with, is within your power, do well to minimize coming with extremely valuable things to church. Maybe things like um, checkbooks or some kind of very valuable things, except you have to. And if, if you do come with them, please protect them. We do not want a situation where we hear that people have come to um, you know, steal or do anything. And then the final announcement still on security is please we have official correspondence systems. The PR desk is outside. You can always meet them for correspondence. Do not listen to any third party correspondence on any and all matters that relate to the ministry, especially when you are here, especially as it um, concerns things that have to do with finance or so on and so forth. Whatever you want to find out, the PR desk is there, the protocol department, alongside the security people they are here to help you you can always ask authorized people because some of you have been misled by people who just want to take advantage of you it's important that i state this and the lord is going to grant us grace and help us in jesus name it's raining so please do well if you if you if you don't have to you can just remain a bit let the rain subside and then you can go out so that you do not um you do not get yourself wet, especially for those who have children and nursing mothers. And if you can, please do well to help and support some of our people who may not have vehicles as, as at yet so that you can just help them. The Lord will bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you so much. I honor and I bless everyone who has been here. Again, please let's appreciate Minister Owe Abutu. God bless you. Thank you such such a great time with you hallelujah the lord bless you i declare that your week beginning is blessed in jesus name you will experience the supernatural and you will command same all through this week in the name of jesus you will continue to love the lord with all your heart and you continue to serve him passionately and whilst you do that you will keep experiencing results from one level to the other in jesus name the lord bless you the lord honor you for in Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye